Good afternoon, good evening, uh, or good morning. My name is Arne Holt and I'm the Executive Director of AIPPI. I'm delighted to welcome you to the third edition of the WIPO AIPPI Joint Webinar Series. This webinar session is dedicated to current trends in WIPO mediation and arbitration for IP and technology disputes. Before we start, a few housekeeping rules. Uh, first, if you allow me, if you want to ask a question to the moderators, uh, please submit them via the Q&A button located at the middle of the bar at the bottom of your screen. Please note that we cannot guarantee that we'll be able to answer all questions during this webinar because the Q&A session is, is quite short. Although the chat function is also open, please do not use it uh, to ask questions. You can, however, use it to incur uh, a technical difficult if you incur technical difficulties and if you need help from our staff. There is also a brief feedback survey after the webinar. Thank you very much for filling it out. So without further ado, I will now introduce the moderator of today's session, Ms. Aurelia Marie. Aurelia is a European and French trademark and design attorney and partner at Bois de Lomini an IP firm based in Paris, where she leads the firm's trademark domain names designs department. Aurelia is also an AIPPI member and vice chair of the ADR standing committee. So Aurelia, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Arno. Well, I'm very pleased to participate to this webinar. It will be my first time. Um, so, Hello, everybody. Uh, you know, with the COVID crisis, all of us from one day to, to the next had to stop teleworking the old day. And this situation is obviously still continuing for many of us. But the good point is that we are now all familiar with online case management system, online conferences, and so on. And actually, it works very well. WIPO Mediation and Arbitration Center has been working on online tools for a while now, especially in ADR files. And these tools have proven their full efficiency during the crisis. Ignacio de Castro, who is the director of the IP Dispute and External Relation Division of the WIPO Administration and Mediation Center, will present us the ADR solutions proposed by WIPO and the online tools that were developed. But besides, the COVID crisis has had also for consequences that in many contractual cases, parties' undertakings were not fulfilled. As a result, numerous contractual issues arose and the suddenness of the crisis, its unexpected character make the settlement of these issues quite uncertain. ADR solutions are therefore very attractive solutions to use in this situation we are all living. Jean-Christophe Troussel will explain the all potential ADR can give us. Jean-Christophe has 25 years of experience in IP and he's the head of the IP practice and partner at Bird and Bird Brussels. But let's start first with the WIPO ADR system and online tools. Ignacio, I leave you the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aurelia. Um, good afternoon, good morning, good evening to all participants. Um, it's difficult to be um, speaking to, to a screen, but I saw from the list of participants that um, I recognized a few familiar names. So I hope you are all doing well in the current situation. Um, so as, as Aurelia was mentioning, I'm going to be presenting a little bit what we have been doing uh, in recent times, uh, also as a result of the current crisis. The WIPO Arbitration Aviation Center, as you know, has been uh, operational for, the, for 25 years now. We facilitate the resolution of commercial, including IP disputes, through mediation and arbitration. We have offices in Geneva, where I'm based, as well as a small office in Singapore. And um, the objective of the center is to provide some international neutrality and also to provide a forum 
specialized in IP and technology disputes. Uh, we provide mediation, arbitration, expert determination services, as well as domain name dispute resolution services. Um, and in that area, which is not the topic of today's presentation, we are also experiencing a, a, a considerable increase in the number of cases. Uh, last year, we administered 3,400 cases. Um, in, 29, sorry, in 2018, 3,400 cases, 2019, 3,600 cases, and this year again, we are seeing an increase in the number of cases. Uh, the domain name cases uh, have been a good training ground for us because, as you know, those proceedings take place without any physical meetings between the parties and in an online environment. So we have been using that experience also in relation to the administration of mediation and arbitration cases. The role of the center is to administer all these uh, cases under different WIPO rules. We try to um, provide as active case management to try to limit the time and cost of these procedures and we use in particular a tool called WIPO EADR that I will uh, explain later. We um, assist also and that's probably the most important step in the process in the appointment of uh, mediators, arbitrators and technical experts and for this we have a very large database comprising more than 2,000 neutrals all over the world specialized in the different areas of IP and technology. In 2020 we have just updated the WIPO IDEA rules which from the beginning were providing uh, some specific um, articles concerning protection of confidentiality, technical evidence, interim relief. More recently, we have added rules for emergency arbitrators. And now we have uh, added uh, some provisions which um, allow us to comply with the new Singapore Mediation Convention in order to allow the submission of a settlement agreement reached in mediation to the courts of a member state that has ratified this convention. The WIPO rules are um, available and are used for mostly international cases. 75% uh, of our cases are international, but 25% are also cases between two parties of the same nationality. And there we try to accommodate the procedure to the different uh, legal traditions and in particular common law traditions or civil law traditions depending on the parties and what are the applicable substantive laws or place of arbitration if in the case of arbitration. Um, uh, in terms of the caseload, the caseload in mediation and arbitration is growing year after year. We, we Last year we got, um, we received 179 cases and the, this year we are already past uh, more than half of the cases received last year. So the cases are growing uh, gradually. We also receive what we call good offices. These are situations in which parties are involved in a dispute and they want our help in trying to submit that dispute to mediation in particular. These cases traditionally were contractual cases in their vast majority. A few years ago, we had more than 75% contractual cases, but we are seeing an increase of non-contractual cases and I will explain the reasons why in a minute. The types of cases that we deal with um, cover all the areas of intellectual property, uh, patents, trademarks, Copyright, in the, in the area of copyright, we are seeing some changes. We are seeing, for instance, an increase in digital copyright disputes involving um, CMOs, collective management organizations, and uh, platforms, um, online platforms. And um, uh, in the area of patents, we are seeing that traditionally we were dealing mostly with pharma and life sciences disputes including medical devices, for instance, and now we are seeing also some cases relating to telecom and uh, standard essential patents. Uh, in the area of IT, we are seeing many cases there dealing with um, software licensing and general terms and conditions. 
We are very pleased with the settlement rate in, in mediation. We have nearly 70% settlement rate, but also in arbitration we are seeing an important level of settlement and we think that is a good thing. Um, in terms of the options, um, mostly, as I was mentioning, these are contractual clauses which are included in all types of IP or IT related uh, issues. Uh, and in these uh, contracts, there will be often be a clause which provides for an initial stage of negotiation. If the parties are not able to resolve the dispute in the negotiation stage, they may move to mediation. And if they are not able to reach a settlement in the course of the mediation, they may then move, escalate to expedited arbitration or to wipe arbitration. If they reach uh, the arbitration phase, then if the parties do not find a, a settlement in the course of arbitration, there will be an award which will be enforceable under the New York Convention for International Arbitration Awards. Um, as I was mentioning, most cases are the result of contractual clauses. We have model clauses on our website. And now we are seeing an increase in submission agreements in which the parties were did not have a contract between themselves or are involved in some court proceedings and they want to refer their, uh, their current dispute to mediation or to arbitration. And I will provide some examples of these type of cases at the end of my presentation. Uh, very often what we are seeing now is that parties are using um, online forms which are available in the WIPO IP portal to submit their disputes to mediation or to arbitration. This is the online request uh, that is available from WIPO's website and there you have the different requests, model requests for mediation or for arbitration. Uh, this is the standard model clause, uh, which we see most often. This is a combined clause, which provides for an initial stage of mediation, in which all the parties need to do is to specify the place of mediation. They can choose whichever place they want, whichever place is most convenient, and also the language of the mediation proceedings. If the dispute has not been resolved through mediation, parties then agree to move to arbitration and there they can choose between arbitration or as it is the case in this model clause, expedited arbitration. Uh, here it's important to choose the place of arbitration. Again, they can choose the place most convenient to the parties, the language of the arbitral proceedings. And in addition, as you do in most international contracts, it's important to choose the substantive applicable law to the contract. Um, here uh, you have a screenshot of the WIPO clause generator. This is something that is used by parties who find that they want to add additional elements to the standard clause. It's something to, to be careful with. It provides different additional elements in addition to the core elements that I mentioned earlier. And you can play with it if you want. And if you wish also, you are most welcome to send us the draft uh, clause that you have drafted and uh, get our advice or our guidance on whether this is something that we have seen in the past and whether we think it may be a good or a bad idea based on previous experience. So don't hesitate to, to use the clause generator and send us draft uh, clauses uh, if you wish. Online case administration tools. Of course, um, in the current situation, we, we are seeing that virtually all mediation and arbitration cases that we are administering are using to one extent or another video conferencing facilities as well as WIPO EADR. WIPO EADR is, is a platform that we use, um, that we've been using for, for quite a while. We've been using it for over 10 years and we started using it for proceedings under the America's Cup. Uh, we have dealt with 55 cases uh, dealing with the America's Cup where this platform was used um, to, for all the submission of documents and pleadings in those cases. 
uh, in recent times, uh, it's been using it's been used quite a lot in wipe arbitration cases. It's it's an optional tool, but uh, thirty percent of wipe arbitrations are taking advantage of this wipe EADR tool. This tool is is very practical. It's quite uh, easy to to handle, um, and um, you have of course. Um, Everything is, is secured, protected by passwords, encrypted, etc. Um, case communications are filed and are immediately notified to the parties, to the arbitrators, to the center. There's also, also a search facility, a message board, an overview function, and also now it complies with um, uh, data protection regulations. Uh, this tool is also available free of charge. Um, let me finish with some uh, examples of, of cases uh, dealing with uh, in which um, online tools uh, have been used to one extent or another. The first example is, is, is relatively the, the situation before the current crisis. Here uh, it's an IP licensing dispute between two European companies and invariably in this type of disputes the mediator would contact all the initial uh, steps in the process uh, online through telephone conferences or video conferences and that was the situation until now. More recently what we have seen and I'm mentioning here a case that took place uh, already two years ago involving um, a startup in Asia and uh, a very small um, startup in um, the west coast to the US um, this related to a license agreement regarding the use of mobile apps and uh, here the entire mediation took place through teleconferences and video conferences. The mediator would conduct plenary sessions with both parties and then separate sessions with each of the parties and then they would meet again and uh, this case was, was a successful uh, case because it resulted in a settlement relatively quickly within a couple of months of commencing. Um, the th next example, the third example, is um, a dispute um, involving two companies, uh, both companies based in, in Singapore. And this is a um, procedure uh, which is uh, mediation available in the course of trademark opposition proceedings before the IP Office of Singapore. Uh, this case started in the middle of, of the pandemic and every step of the process was conducted through different video conferencing facilities, different platforms. Um, parties used for the plenary meetings WebEx and then they would use um, for caucus meetings either Zoom or uh, WhatsApp or Skype uh, in a way to avoid any risk of um, confidential information being shared and duly. So this case uh, proceeded very, very efficiently and um, the parties were able to reach a settlement agreement one month after the commencement of the mediation. Finally, um, I wanted to mention a, a case which is um, an arbitration case uh, in which um, two uh, very large uh, consumer goods um, multinationals submitted um, part of their dispute, which was a patent infringement dispute pending in, in several jurisdictions relating to, to consumer goods. They submitted just the part of the dispute involving the infringement of one of the patents, which was the German patent, to a WIPO arbitration. The, what was very interesting about this case is the, the, the parties, the lawyers of the parties used the, the close generator and they adapted the submission agreement to their needs. They adopted some of the procedures which apply in German patent infringement litigation and uh, they decided who, uh, what were the characteristics of the arbitrators who all had to be uh, German patent lawyers and uh, they even um, agreed on some of the remedies that would be available and not available. As a result, the, the procedure was conducted very, very efficiently and uh, a final award was issued within six months of the commencement of the proceedings. Uh, I would like to finish just um, with um, uh, one word of caution regarding uh, related agreements. 
uh, we, we often see related agreements in the area of research and development. Uh, and there you would see often non-disclosure agreements, options, patent, uh, patent licensing options, consortium agreements, material transfer agreements, licensing, etc. And what we find very often when we are dealing with these disputes is that there are different parties in, different, in these different agreements and they often include different dispute resolution clauses. Of course, that, that can be problematic because then you may end up with um, parallel proceedings. You may have litigation in relation to one contract between certain parties and mediation in relation to another contract between some of the same parties. So what we recommend there is, is to have some level of consistency as much as possible in order to, to be able to consolidate these procedures, these disputes within the same procedure. So for the time being, uh, thank you very much. I hope uh, that we have time for questions. And uh, of course, you can always contact us through the generic email address, which is on this slide, arbitermail at ypo.int. And um, I will leave now the floor to, to Jean-Christophe. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Ignacio. As we can see, the, the means you, you can offer are so important and, and impressive, and they are particularly important during the situation uh, we are living. And uh, I'm sure Jean-Christophe uh, will um, develop all the possibilities ADR can offer to us now. Jean-Christophe? Yes. You. Thank you, Aurelia. Thank you, Ignacio. Uh, thank you all for um, uh, welcoming us in the intimacy of either your home or your office. Um, Thank you uh, for, for welcoming us. I've been working from home uh, for the last, last uh, three months. I'm in the office today. It's an exception. Um, and I think we are all in the same boat in that respect, especially uh, the litigators among us. Um, the, the lockdown was really a big change for us, right? Um, basically, all techniques of dispute resolution somehow um, be in court or by arbitration or by mediation, they consist in essence of bringing all the parties together in one room and ash up a solution or a resolution. Well, that has been no longer practical. That has been even uh, in many instances prohibited. Um, and indeed that was not uh, wise and it is probably today uh, still not very wise. So we all litigators had to adapt. In that respect, um, um, these are a bit the issues that I would like to, uh, to, to click quickly recap uh, with you. Um, how the courts have reacted, how the ADR bodies have reacted, what are the consequences? Uh, you will see the list. One word of caution, maybe um, we all need to remain modest, I think. Um, this is all pretty new. Um, I, I'm not a guru. I'm just a practitioner with some expertise and I've uh, discussed these issues with others. So I'm happy to, to share that with you, but I'm not a crystal ball type of, of person. Um, so if we start with how the courts uh, have, uh, have reacted, well, it's, a, it's, it's an understatement that probably they have been taken by surprise. Um, in many countries, um, the, the tools available to judges were really ill uh, suited. Um, tools for homeworking, tools for video hearing, um, e-filing systems even were not really working well in, in, in several countries. So if we check the box for courts, uh, well, that, that does not really give, um, uh, in terms of, uh, of preparation, a, a very positive um, uh, picture. Um, and on top of that, this crisis came uh, uh, while actually in many countries, uh, litigators are faced with a, a backlog in the court uh, system. So that backlog plus two or three months or more of, of closure 
uh, except for es essential matters, but the IP matters were not considered generally as essential matters. Um, that is creating, of course, a bottleneck. Uh, the new matters were not necessarily handled. The hearings that were scheduled were cancelled in many cases. Uh, not necessarily rescheduled, really cancelled with an uncertainty about when they will be, uh, uh, will take place. And, uh, and I, my, my feeling is that in many countries, the judiciary holiday, when it, that exists, has not been cancelled. So we are now heading to a, another two months of, um, of, well, that will not be used to catch up. Let's, let's put it that way. So delay is really uh, the, uh, the, 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 the thing that results from that. Well, have ADR bodies reacted uh, in, a, in a better way? Uh, in essence, the ADR, uh, ADR is consensual and flexible by nature. So it has in its AD, in, in an NDA, oh, sorry, <laughs> it's in its ADN, it has um, um, the, uh, the, 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 this consensualism is its, its efforts to suit the needs of uh, the users. Uh, of course, uh, these uh, these ADR bodies had their own difficulties. Uh, the staff was not there. Um, there was also a lockdown for them. Meeting rooms were not necessarily available. Um, so it's not a, 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 pic a miracle picture. But what I have felt is that actually the community especially in the arbitration world. This community was really vibrant about uh, getting solutions out and uh, adapting quickly um, uh, in a wide scale and adoption of uh, all the means to make sure that online and virtual tech would be available to facilitate the process of arbitration in a remote way. The, the, the good thing uh, or the, the, the advantage of the ADR bodies in that respect is that they did not start from scratch. Uh, remote hearings for pre-trial issues, there is something that existed already. The e-filing of documents, that was probably in, in many arbitration bodies, that was something that was already very usual. So these bodies could build up on, on something that existed already. Uh, but what I noticed is really the, the, the wish and the, the will of this community to come out with pretty detailed guidance, pretty detailed protocols about how to deal with um, uh, online hearings, when organize these virtual hearings, what are the necessary technical uh, means that must be uh, put in place. And especially uh, all this with in mind, how can we make sure that these hearings, virtual hearings, will not be challenged afterwards when the arbitration will end up in a decision? How, make sure that it will resist any attempt uh, of a party, the party who lost, to uh, challenge the validity of these, uh, these process, virtual process, uh, for instance, on, on due process or the way the witnesses were uh, uh, examined during these virtual hearings and so on. So with in mind, really how to make sure that enforceability of our arbitration awards will be um, safe and robust. So this is how I see that uh, the ADR bodies have reacted compared with how the judiciary has reacted. Maybe one word that I forgot to say about the judiciary, um, somehow the, 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 the picture that I have uh, made is a bit negative. What I've also seen is that individually, some judges, some courts have really tried their best to adapt and they have done the extra mile and uh, individually they have done that, but the system did not. And that is, I think, a, a difference. And another thing is that we see, uh, I, I discussed yesterday with friends in, in, in France, 
they said, and Aurel may, may, may certainly comment on that, they said that actually the situation in Paris in court is very, very difficult. It's very blocked. But in the rest of France, uh, courts have adapted to better. The problem, of course, for us is that most of the IP litigation is concentrated in Paris, so it doesn't help us so much. Uh, but again, I wanted to nuance a little bit the, uh, the dark picture that I had uh, done uh, for the, the court. Again, individual uh, uh, efforts were made, but in general, the system uh, adapted maybe less quicker than the ADR system. Um, well, what are the possible consequences of, of that situation? Will there be more mandatory uh, mediation in contracts? Will parties make that more as a as the first way to handle a dispute will courts mandate more mediation well let's let's put it that way i think mediation has many advantages it is fast it is generally not very expensive uh, it is confidential it is without prejudice and i think that with the delay we are facing many parties may ask themselves the question, should we not use this delay to try to um, mediate? Of course, for mediation, you have to be two to tango. There will be, in many cases, one party will not have so much interest in doing that. But, well, I think that in many cases, um, still uh, good litigators may find that this is an avenue that is good for, for the parties. So that is, the initiative of the parties. But what about the initiative of the court? Well, um, the court may take that initiative to try to uh, clean a little bit their desk in terms of backlog. Um, and you will notice that in certain countries, for instance, in one court suggests a mediation and one party refuses it, then it can have adverse inferences, not necessarily on the substance of the matter, but for instance, on the costs in the end, on who will bear the costs of the litigation in the end. And adverse, of course, to the party who refused that if in the end that party is losing, or even if it is winning, it may have an impact on how much of the attorney fees, for instance, or cost it may uh, recuperate from, from the court. Uh, that is for mediation. But what about uh, arbitration? I have, less, uh, um, uh, I have less experience in arbitration, but my feeling is that this is also a period where parties will probably rediscover the advantage of the arbitration. They know the advantage. They know that uh, uh, it is more the parties that are in control. They know that generally it is faster and more predictable because you have the choice of the, uh, the, the profile of the arbitrators. Um, also, maybe faster because you can concentrate all the issues in one forum, while sometimes in IP, you will have to litigate in different countries. Um, and also faster because there is uh, normally no appeal. Uh, well, there is enforcement issues in court, but they are very limited. So all these advantages, they are known. What is new today? I think maybe the fact that indeed um, remote remote um, and virtual uh, hearings are pretty uh, probably better organized in this type of setting arbitration than in many countries for courts it's more flexible you again even for that you have more control and again um, look at some uh, of the uh, recent protocols of or guidance that arbitrators have given to parties on how to deal with the virtual hearings. And we say, well, it's pretty, it's pretty detailed. You, it's, it's, it's kind of a, of a, of a machine that, is, that will run well, generally. So that is maybe more reassuring for the parties than what would happen with a court um, in terms of, uh, of virtual hearings. But again, the, the, the devil is probably in the detail. Um, it is, of course, extremely important if we want these trends to fly, that the remote tools work well, that they are fit for purpose. And in that respect, it's, it's not always easy. Look at remote mediation. I have no personal experience with video conferencing, but I have tried once 
in the early days by phone because the parties were apart and the value of the of the of the dispute was not uh, worth uh, parties traveling and so on. I will never do that again. I mean, by phone was really extremely difficult. But now with video, if you have the right tools, like Ignacio said, you have to have the right e breakout rooms, like you would have in the real world. You want to see that party alone, you have to have a, a, a virtual room to have that conversation and be sure that the other party is not there. You want to see a party without their lawyers or the lawyers without the party, you need to have another room for that too. So you need, as a, as a, as a mediator, you need to have the passwords, you need to put people in the waiting rooms. Uh, and I, I understand what, what Ignacio, I heard what Ignacio said about using a different um, media for that Skype, uh, Zoom, WebEx. I, I would dream of a one stop shop for this where I do not have to call on Skype a party to have a, a personal chat with them. So I think that is a, an, an interesting uh, development that should be uh, uh, used. The chat function is also, uh, well, it's well known and very, and, and very easy to use, but chat can be used to thought, okay, guys, it's now time to go back to the, to the pool room, uh, or sorry, I will enter your room in a, min in a minute, is that okay? So that kind of things, sharing documents like we do here, Recording maybe at the end of a, of a successful mediation when parties agree, then the mediator can recap and hear the parties agree with that recap and possibly have, uh, uh, have even the settlement signed by e signature at the end. So if everything is well done, well, I think that what we'll, we'll, we will miss, of course, is the physical contact is uh, to see the people reactions uh, on their face and so on. But I think that we will get there. The Zoom can be, the, the Zoom, not the, the, the platform, but the Zoom of the camera and so on can be used for that. And uh, I think we have to adapt, but probably that, that, will, that, will, um, that will fly. And for arbitration, again, as I said, the big issue is due process. Um, I, I invite you to look at the uh, civil protocol on video conferencing that was prepared and issued just before the pandemic. So also to illustrate that the community of arbitration was thinking about this even before the crisis. Uh, so they, somehow they were prepared. Um, but this, is, this, this protocol is pretty interesting to see, uh, the to give the direction on how much detail you have to think about, especially for witness uh, examination. It goes to the detail of, for instance, the witness must be on a clean desk. And for instance, here, part, or the, the arbitrators should have the tool to zoom in the face of the witness to see his face with really uh, very clear when he responds to questions. So again, I think that we are trying, the community is trying to mimic as much as possible on the virtual world what could happen in the uh, real world. And again, I, I think that is not an unrealistic goal. Um, uh, we said that uh, we would also try to identify a certain number of, um, of the issues or the, the potential disputes, issues of dispute between parties in IP contracts. And I have listed there a, cert a certain numbers and they are, it's, it's, again, it's, it's pretty obvious the ones uh, I, have, uh, I have mentioned. Um, but what is clear, I think, is that um, the, the, the crisis of the size we are facing will create disputes, uh, both um, between contra contractual counterparties and with states um, uh, on the long run. Uh, Take the example, for instance, of life sciences, and even on the short term, you have seen, we have seen, uh, the urgent need for manufacture and supply of critical uh, products uh, under lockdown restrictions. Uh, the supply chain was really under stress. There was high demand and logistic problems. That will result and has already resulted in inferior quality products. That will also result in probably 
uh, some type of, uh, of, 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 uh, of disputes. Um, not necessary IP. So if we go to IP, these are the ones uh, I have seen. I think that the, the wave is coming probably. Um, to, so far, I, I have a feeling that the parties have given priority to the urgency, to the business. But when the, when the dust settles, maybe uh, this, will, this will change. Um, but to me, the big issue is about what do the parties, what do the smart parties in a situation like that? Do they have to terminate the contract, litigate the contract, or renegotiate the contract? And with in mind, the last point that I have on that slide, which is insolvency issues. So uh, what is the cost of shifting from one partner to the other? What is the cost of, of, of having the risk that the partner becomes insolvent? Go, going through these risks, what is the best business solution? Is that an interim accommodation of the situation or just terminate, litigate, and try to get damages. I think this 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 will be um, these are already issues that um, that parties are um, are facing. Um, I think that for the sake of time, I will um, uh, remain at this. For, for I will not um, um, comment more. But maybe something about the cooperative models in MegTech. You have seen many of these initiatives popping up, like the Open COVID pledge, for instance, which is a pledge between the tech, uh, the tech business and the medical sector. Also, initiatives uh, by universities like Stanford and MIT to create pools of uh, of, of patents to to try to help uh, the research. All this is really ex excellent initiatives. The question is, will the parties remain so well intended in three, four, five, six, nine months? And when one of these initiatives will really find the right uh, uh, vaccine for COVID-19 or something in very interesting for uh, a business point of view, will these good intentions resists the, um, um, the, the, the money at stake. I don't know, but I think, uh, again, this, this will be um, uh, something to watch. Um, to, to, term it, to, to, to close, um, I don't like the, the, the term new normal, but I, I did not find any other. Um, the question is, well, is, is this a trend or just a momentum? And again, I, I'm not a guru. I don't know. I just can pinpoint the facts that I have put on this slide and all go in the direction that probably, yes, uh, there is room for more ADR. I mean, a, I, I feel that very much um, uh, around me, uh, this ra rapid economic downturn, plus uh, the uncertainty for the future, and a, a, what is certain is will be a slow recovery, uh, has put a lot of pressure on the um, resolution, the dispute resolution budgets. And I think that parties are more than ever um, uh, looking for smart ways to resolve their disputes. And that would be, I think, my, 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 my conclusion here is that actually as good litigators, that has always been our goal is to make sure that the, the dispute is resolved in a way that makes sense for the parties. Sometimes for that, you really need to bite hard and not let go. And sometimes, well, this is just one part of your job and the other part is to take a step back and reconsider and see whether on the long term, this is the right direction. And I think that probably today, 
uh, to, to serve our client's best interest, this alternative way to see dispute resolution should be with a higher priority because of uh, this, this, um, um, this, this cost cutting, among others, uh, things to consider. Um, but also uh, because I, I have the feeling that until today, at least, um, parties that are in IP contracts have a tendency to face adversity more together than one against the other. Will that last? I don't know. But today, that's, I think, the state of mind of many parties. So let's partner. We will, and, and, and let's get, take interim measures. We'll see later, but for the moment, uh, maybe let's renegotiate or the, the equilibrium and balance uh, of our deal. And in that respect, for instance, mediation can help. And in other times, probably a party would have said, okay, I terminate, see you in court. I don't think that this approach is as high in the priority today than it used to be. So um, again, let me close here. Uh, and of course, uh, like uh, Ignacio and Aurelia, happy to take, uh, to take questions. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Christophe. I have to say that I fully agree with uh, your, your conclusion, especially in a situation which was obviously not provided at all by the, by the parties and, uh, and uh, where in contracts there, there is um, a lot of uncertainties uh, as to the issue that will be given to the, to the, to the case. But, um, I have also to say that, um, well, as far as uh, uh, litigation in court are, are concerned, uh, the protocol and, you know, all these old rules that are usually respected is, looks, look at, for me, at least a bit against uh, virtual earrings. And um, on the contrary, in ADR solutions, these earrings have been uh, tried for a while and parties are used to and I have to say that it creates also a distance that can help to find uh, a solution so which is uh, uh, the, 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 the aim of all these ADR uh, procedures. Um, uh, I have some questions for you uh, both. Um, I have to say the Two questions are uh, addressed to Ignacio, but maybe uh, Jean Christophe, you will have some, some comments to make uh, for the first one. The, the, this question is sent by Asako Atanaka and uh, is any particular reason why the number of cases, uh, particularly mediation, is increasing? I'm sure that both of you have uh, um, a lot of uh, things to say to that respect. Um, Ignacio, you want to? Yes, I am happy to first? start. Um, so we, we are seeing, um, as, um, as was mentioned, uh, an increase in the number of cases, in mediation cases. And, and I think it's probably uh, what uh, Jean-Christophe was mentioning, really, is this um, situation, really, the, the parties are, are facing adversity together. I think were the words that Jean-Christophe used, which I thought were, were good words. I think we, we're seeing that um, renegotiation parties are getting more used to renegotiation. Lawyers are also much more used to, to mediation techniques. Uh, and even people like uh, Jean-Christophe, litigators are also uh, doing mediation. And, and also we are finding that the courts, as, as was mentioned, are encouraging the use of mediation. The courts and other administrative authorities like the IP offices but um, we are finding uh, that certain courts are, are very willing to, to try to move certain cases to mediation. We always found that from the US courts, from some European courts, but now we are seeing that quite a lot in, in Asia. Uh, we're seeing, for instance, in China, um, some of the, of the courts are really encouraging the, the use of mediation. 
and they are opening this window for, for mediation um, and they're using quite um, attractive ways of doing it. So for instance, now we were finding out that the courts in China um, are, are offering mediation as, as an alternative to the court proceedings. They're even sometimes guiding some of the more complex cases, which would require them uh, to spend more time dealing with, with the complexity of the case. And, and the, the way they structure the mediation costs is also quite interesting because the mediators are almost acting on a, on a contingency basis. So they only get paid if they find a settlement. So, so that's, of course, that, that's not very nice for the mediators, but, uh, but it is something that, of course, encourages parties to, to have a go at mediation with, with a very limited, well, with no, no risk, certainly no, no financial risk. So, so that's, um, those are some of the things that we are seeing. I mean, we are also seeing in, in Singapore uh, another thing which I, I find very, very impressive, really. And uh, it's, it's they, they have now in, in July and August, uh, the Singapore Supreme Court is, over, is offering mediation entirely free, of course, of any cost. They call it Singapore United. And to me, that's, uh, that's a very impressive um, way of, of dealing with the current situation, which I, I would like to see in, in other countries for a limited period of time, just to deal with the, the backlogs and the bottlenecks that the courts are, are dealing with. Um, Jean-Christophe, maybe you have some comments to make? Yes, very short. Um, I think, first of all, uh, I, I commend uh, the WIPO's efforts to, uh, to talk to courts and to educate judges on IP issues and on uh, ADR issues. I think that is really um, um, a very, a very useful um, um, effort that WIPO is doing. In terms of mediation um, um, driven by court or suggested by court, I think that there is a, a thing about perception. Some, some parties will have the feeling that if the court suggests that, it's because it doesn't want to deal with the case. Well, that's a wrong perception, of course. Um, but that perception exists. And in that respect as well, but maybe my comment would be for the, for the litigators to think hard about what is the right timing for an offer to, uh, to, to mediate. Uh, if you wait too long, uh, yes, probably the risk of uh, appearing, uh, the risk that this move appears as a sign of weakness in, in your, on your side is higher than if you uh, immediately in the beginning of the case say, well, um, uh, maybe the parties are smarter to mediate than to, uh, to, to litigate. But that, that is this perception issue that I wanted to, to highlight, both uh, from the parties, is that a sign of weakness? And second, from the court, is that a sign that they don't want to, uh, to deal with the case? And I think these two perceptions are wrong, but there is much work to do to, uh, to avoid them. Thank you. Uh, well, I have another I have two questions, but in fact, um, they could be a group in one, I think. Um, this is about the Singapore Convention on WIPO mediation and the, the challenges that uh, uh, WIPO is, is facing in the development of uh, ADR uh, solutions. So maybe, Ignacio, you can give us some words about uh, uh, your feeling about this uh, convention, which is not... Uh, uh, so far signed by, by many countries. Okay, um, well, the, the Singapore Convention, as, as you point out, is, is relatively new. I think it's coming into, into force in September. Uh, it has been signed by, by some big um, countries, but not, not by all. We, we, we welcome the, the, the Singapore Mediation Convention very much. I think uh, in a way it forces us to, to, to talk about mediation, which I think is, is a good thing. And um, I think it's going to, to facilitate the, uh, when it comes into force, the, the enforcement of uh, settlement agreements. Uh, however, I think one, one potential disadvantage, as it is the case for the um, New York Convention for uh, international arbitration awards 
is that it, um, it also mentions a number of circumstances in which you can ref in which a court could refuse to enforce a, a settlement agreement. And of course, that, that may mean that some of the mediators uh, have to adopt uh, stricter rules when it comes to what we call in arbitration due process. So I think it could formalize a little bit some of the elements of, of mediation, but others would say that that could also make uh, mediators or the mediation process more, more professional. So I think it maybe it will raise the standard. Uh, I think we will have to see, I think it's probably too early to, to know what is the effect of the Singapore Mediation Convention, mm -hmm. but certainly in general terms, I think we it forces us to to talk about mediation. Um, as I mentioned, we 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 just made some small amendments to the to the WIPO mediation rules to allow for the settlement agreement to be made available to the court of the place of enforcement, because in the past under the current under under the previous rules, um, the mediation agreement was confidential and could not be. Uh, made available to the court in the enforcing stage. So that's that's all I had to say at this stage. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Um, and what are, do you think the main challenges were with regards to WIPO arbitration and mediation? This is a question from uh, Michel Raffaino Mangiato for you. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the challenges, um, I think, of course, um, on the one hand, I think the, uh, I mean the, the perceptions also of arbitration can be challenging, and, and we find sometimes that when we speak with some in-house lawyers uh, in, in a particular company, they went through a traumatic experience in one case ten years ago, um, and they they had an arbitration that went on for seven years or whatever and then the the award could not be enforced well that that um, it, it takes a while before those lawyers those in-house lawyers uh, go back to to arbitration the so we we find the uh, anecdotal evidence of of this dislike of arbitration in certain companies and um, uh, with with mediation i think we we don't find that i think with mediation mm -hmm. We may find that someone, some in-house lawyer will tell us it was a bit of a waste of time or the other party was not taking it seriously, fine. But, but it, was not, it, was, it didn't cost them seven years and I don't know how many hundred thousand. So I think we, we, are, try, we are aware of, of those problems, really. Um, we, I mean, we, we, we push as much as we can mediation. We think mediation is, is, is easier. And uh, I think it, it doesn't need to be a a very sophisticated company with the best lawyers to use mediation. I think mediation can be used by by small and large companies. It allows to renegotiate. I mean, we, we've al already mentioned all the advantages of mediation. So, so that's um, that's what I wanted to 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 answer. But but maybe Jean Christophe has a more direct uh, experience of of speaking with some of his clients, and he faces some challenges at times. Oh, I think you're right. Uh, it's um, um, I, I don't have much to to add. There are, of course, in a, in the world of IP, there are some limitation of what arbitration can do and cannot do. Um, of course, it's easier to have that in a licensing agreement than to impose arbitration in a patent uh, infringement claim, for instance. What? What? Okay. Uh, you, you gave one example where it worked well, and um, and I think again um, in in a, in a pace and with a global reach that uh, no court uh, uh, proceedings could have uh, could have uh, attained. So um, yeah. What? Still, we have to make the promotion of uh, all these um, mediation uh, arbitration solutions, I think. Maybe a last question for you both um, from Kuzo Yabe. Do you think that um, arbitration or um, mediation can help in disputes, in whole disputes? I mean, in, for instance, in disputes including uh, determination on technical issues, especially in patents. 
Um, Ignacio, maybe yes, you yes, can start. Yes, definitely. I think we, in fact, we see that that could be a, a big advantage of of mediation and arbitration by selecting the the right mediator or arbitrator. You you can find uh, someone who is is an expert in in a particular uh, in patents, trademarks, copyright, but also in particular technologies, pharma, telecoms, etc. And, and what we are finding also is that even that's another way in which we are trying to, to work with the courts. Um, we have um, the WIPO expert determination rules and a list of technical experts who can also be appointed in the course of court proceedings. And that, that can be something quite, um, quite advantageous. But, but you're absolutely right, Aurelia. I think promotion continues to be a, a big challenge. But even there, I think what uh, what I find is that these new tools, and I, I have to admit that I was quite skeptical about uh, doing a webinar or or anything like this, and and now we find that we we're doing a webinar today from from our homes or our offices, we're we're having participants from from many places really, and it's uh, even that is 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 proving to be a very very good way of of explaining uh, these procedures and, and even to have some, some level of, of interaction with the, with the participants. So I, I find there are some positive things coming out of this situation. Jean-Christophe, a word for, as a conclusion? Oh, yes, I like the, the last question because it, it, of course, the fact that it's, it's technology uh, litigation uh, is 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 a very frightening element for many parties who will litigate in court because they will exactly say that I will end up before a judge who does not understand the technology. So that is, I think, really one of the uh, advantages of, of arbitration. But again, it's not a miracle solution because yes, of course, there are experts available. Yes, of course, in the repository of of neutrals, uh, WIPO and other organizations and excellent people. But the more, tech, the more specialized technique you have, the, mo the most difficult it will be to have the parties agree on an expert because people will be conflicted, uh, because uh, people will have published in a certain direction and that is a bias. Uh, many, many, many uh, reasons why uh, actually the the, the choice of the uh, technical expert or, tech or, or arbitrator with technical background is, is a bit difficult. But sure, I think that this is, for me, one of the main advantages of arbitration is that the parties will end up with somebody who knows what he's talking or she's talking about, who understands the technique, and that, that will also uh, uh, allow people to, to, uh, to gain time because you don't have to explain things from the scratch as you sometimes have to do uh, in courts. Again, countries are very unequal in that respect. In some countries, courts are very uh, tech savvy. In other ones, not at all. Um, so at least you can say that for arbitration, if parties agree on the right arbitrators, they will end up with the right person to understand the matter. Now, the question is, do both parties want that the arbitrator truly understands the matter? Generally, there is one who wants to, <laughs> to maybe, um, is, is less inclined to have that kind of person. But, well, I think that in many cases, parties, again, have an advantage to have this ruled by somebody who knows his or her stuff. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Arno, I think uh, we, we are run of time. So, um, well, maybe you want to add a few words? Yes, now I'm unmuted. Thank you very much. I, I hereby close the session. Thank you very much, Aurelia, Ignacio, and Jean Christophe for your contributions. It's highly appreciated. Thanks also to all participants. In particular, I wish to uh, thank the participants from the US West Coast. It's uh, uh, about 5 a.m. in the morning. I wish you a great work day. 
It will officially start in about two or three hours. I would also like to apologize to uh, uh, participants from New Zealand for going past midnight, only for five minutes. Uh, and before I, I say goodbye, I would briefly address those participants who are not yet AIPPI member. It's quite easy to become one. Uh, you will find all the information on our website or you can address one of our national groups. We're present uh, uh, currently in 120 countries and have national groups in about 70 countries. Uh, have a look at our website or contact us here in Switzerland at the General Secretariat. Thank you very much. Uh, have a good night, have a good work day and see you again soon. Thank you. Anna.